we've had four different presidents who have had banks or banking systems based on what's been called the American system. That was a term coined by Henry Clay in the 19th century. Um, uh, so Americans, basically what I talk about is that it's sovereign money and sovereign credit. In other words, government issued money and credit. Uh, it was based on Alexander Hamilton's three principles that we should have a national bank that would issue um, cheap credit for funding infrastructure and uh, business industry. So we should expand business and industry, have federal uh, subsidies for that, and have protective measures such as tariffs. So that so the American system was opposed to the British system, which was basically a um, you know, an imperial system where they would um, exploit the colonies and uh, we would have to borrow from them and we would have to give, the idea was we would have to give them our resources and then they would make products out of that. So the American system was that we would be self-contained and self-productive. Uh, so the first U.S. bank was set up by Alexander Hamilton and it was uh, capitalized with uh, federal debt, three quarters federal debt, and it was supposed to be one quarter gold. So um, that Hamilton persuaded Congress to uh, undertake to to refinance the debts of the states. And so they had the state debts and the federal debts, which were rolled over into federal bonds, which then could be used three quarters to uh, buy in an interest in the bank, capital in the bank. Uh, and then these bonds actually served as a form of money. They would they would trade. I mean, you could argue that was our first <laughs> our first national money supply. But the bank itself issued bank notes, as all banks did, and that was the first uh, national uh, money system that we had. Uh, of course, it was very uh, controversial. Jefferson disputed whether it was even constitutional to have a bank. So it wasn't really, and then, so the charter expired after 25 years, and then we were involved in the War of 1812, and that put us in debt again. So um, the second U.S. bank was chartered, and that's the one that really got infrastructure going under Nicholas Biddle, uh, and it was based on the same, same model. And uh, it, on the question of how banks create money and how that happened. It was originally the fractional reserve system where banks would issue their own bank notes, supposedly redeemable in gold, but they quickly discovered that they could lend 10 times as many notes as they had gold because most people didn't come for their gold. They preferred the notes. They were they were easier to carry around and they were safer. And so the, these bank notes actually traded as money, but in fact, what they were was uh, were promissory notes redeemable in gold. So um, we had the second U.S. bank, and then of course Jackson shut that down because he thought this was fraudulent. The fact that the bank could issue many more notes than it had gold. I mean, there it, you can see the <laughs> see the issue there. Uh, so then we had a number of years of wildcat banking where. Yeah, I, the only national currency were these state bank bank notes and nobody really knew how trustworthy the banks were. There were periodic bank runs where people would rush to uh, trade in your no their notes for gold. You, you really didn't know, like you wanted a bank that was close by because you could get there and turn in your notes if you had to. It was a very unstable system. So Lincoln, immediately when he got into um, office was faced with a civil war and he didn't have a bank. So Henry Carey, who elaborated on this American system, um, told him that he didn't really have to, he was faced with borrowing from the British financiers at 30, well, 26 to 36, 24 to 36% interest, somewhere in that range, very high interest. And so Henry Carey said, you don't have to borrow, you could issue your own money the way the American colonists did. So he went back to the original American system of issuing our own money and actually doubled the money supply. And according to Milton Friedman, um, that did, was not inflationary. I mean, there was some inflation as there always is during a wartime, but the, the, the inflation is due to a scarcity of products. And um, so he managed to, we managed to win the war, or the North managed to win the war, and um, 
funded a, a lot of infrastructure after that. It got the ball rolling and we had a very productive period, in, including financing the um, Intercontinental Railroad, which turned out to actually turn a profit for the government. I mean, the actual expenditure. Um, to, uh, all this is, you know, there's a lot of detail that you could go into on that, but, um, and uh, in Lincoln's tenure, we had the, um, the, the National Banking Acts of 1863 and 1864 were passed and the point of those was to stabilize the system. So the hope of Chase, who was the Treasury Secretary, then was that um, to, that all the banks would turn into they would become nationally chartered banks. And in order to do that, they needed to buy federal debt. In other words, they had to buy federal bonds and then deposit them with the Treasury, and then they could get as much in, in these notes that were called national bank notes. I mean, they had the, the U, so they were a national currency as, as opposed to their individual private bank notes, um, but they had to deposit bonds in order to get the notes. And, and so they, uh, <clears throat> and the hope was that all the banks would do that. And in order to try to force the state banks to do it, the state chartered banks, um, there was a 10% tax imposed on their bank notes, but many of the banks managed to get around that. I mean, they avoided becoming national banks by uh, a new system where they would just write the, the loan value into the uh, deposit, into the checkbook, uh, or give, the, give a checkbook to the borrower. And basically the borrower was writing his own bank note. So the borrower would write the check and the numbers would just be in in the checkbook, and so it was said at the end of the at the end of the 19th century, 90 percent of the bank uh, of the money supply was actually created in this way, just to, as writing them into the accounts of borrowers who then would write checks on their checkbook. So, and that's pretty much what we have today. It's a little more than 90 percent, but we're still on that system where banks just create credit by writing the number into the into your account and then you can write checks on your account. Um, but as Alfeca pointed out, we do have the problem that you've got to find the liquidity somewhere. You've got it. Well, that's another step in the history. So, so there was a big depression because after Lincoln was um, uh, assassinated and the Greenback program was terminated and uh, silver was demonetized. Before that, you could take your silver to the mint and turn it into coins and they got rid of that system. So the, so the money supply shrank. There was a big depression. In 1906, we had a major banking crisis that may have been engineered. <laughs> There's a lot of conspiracy theory around that. But anyway, the result was the Federal Reserve Act in 1913 where we had a bank that was supposed to have been a, well, William, Hen, uh, William Jennings Bryan thought that it was a public bank, but it actually wasn't. It turned out, you know, it's now, it's 100%, it's, it's composed of 12 branches, all of which are 100% um, owned by the banks in their district. Um, but anyway, so, and then it was supposed to present, prevent, um, Bank banking crises, but obviously it didn't work because in 1930 we had the biggest banking crisis in history. The banks were all bankrupt. It was at that time it was a 20% reserve requirement, so people were rushing to the banks and turning their bank notes into gold, and so the banks quickly went bankrupt because they didn't have the gold to redeem the rest of their notes. Uh, so Roosevelt had been hoping that he could use the 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 um, Federal Reserve Banks uh, for infrastructure, but he failed to get that through Congress. So he used the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, which had been set up by Hoover actually to save the banks, not to, to save the economy. But Roosevelt greatly expanded it. And um, it was um, capitalized with $500 million. And over the course of the next 25 years, it issued $40 billion in loans or, um, grants and rebuilt the economy. And so the loans that it made were for um, self-funding loans, they were called the things that would pay back. For example, um, uh, 
dams and uh, uh, transportation, you know, public transportation, et cetera, that generated some sort of profit that could pay back the loans. So that 40 billion actually was repaid and, and the government actually turned a, pri a, a profit while meanwhile rebuilding the whole country and uh, funding much of the US participation in World War II and getting us on a very sound um, financial footing for um, for the, the next 20 years or so. Anyway, okay, I guess I'll stop there, but that's the basic overview.